Um, hi. <coughs> Want to go? Whew. So um, yeah, thanks for the for the um, introduction. It's it's a, a bit funny because like my website actually has my short bio, which is edited, or like people can comment on it. <laughs> so it has become also a performative sort of thing. So somebody added in my spare time, I like to take also like long walks on the beach to read and reflect on reading Camera Lucida and meditate, meditating on the spelling meaning of Passepartout, opera out reflecting on the having late night duet session with my international network of photographies. So <clears throat> in the spirit of accepting this collaborative process now, this is going to be always like my introduction. So if you want to add and change, feel free to go on the website and I swear I will include your comments, so be nice. <laughs> okay, so, um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, very briefly uh, about myself. So I work as digital curator at Photo Museum Winterthur. I mean, I know most of you, um, but I joined in 2015 when Thomas Selig and Duncan Forbes at that time directors went through the repositioning of the institution. Um, making this shift towards an engagement with contemporary photography, post-photography, these different changes that at the time, um, and still now, I hope, um, are shaping the, the role of the image, its properties in fundamental ways. Um, I am interested, I started interest, getting interested in uh, all of these uh, properties, um, not so much in the term, like I think we've heard especially um, yesterday and this morning, you know, digitalizations and um, the point of view of digitality as use as a tool, but I'm more interested in digitality as a form of culture. So how digital images and networked images have transformed photography and created this photographic um, evolution transformation monster of the image that uh, we are witnessing these days. And funny enough, and just to wrap up, uh, yesterday I was uh, very quickly having this chat with Estelle um, where she was saying that, you know, like uh, 10 years ago this post-photographic discourse was so important and, you know, since the 90s we've been talking about post-photography in different forms with different authors talking about different things, right? And now it feels like um, post-photography digital images are much more accepted within the photography museum, photographic institutions, that um, they're much more part of exhibition and the program. And I definitely agree, and I was thinking, yeah, but there's something that's still not quite right, also because I have to defend the, the need to have a job. Uh, I still do think that um, there are certain qualities and properties of the digital and network image which clash with the mindset of the photography museum as this institution and its history and its tradition. Its legacy still sits on top of, um, or like, it's a bit of an obstacle, it clashes, there's a friction with the, the properties of these images. Um, and the same also with photography theory and photography um, history somehow. So I titled um, this presentation, The Photographic Incomplete Reloaded, because, um, yeah, so I was invited four years ago already by the Group Stipendium, which I'm very grateful to. Um, thank you both Catherine and Francisca for four years ago, and thank you, uh, you guys here for now. And it's also nice to have that chance of like, ah, oh, okay, yeah, I started something, you know, and uh, maybe I can use this four years <laughs> to add something to it. And uh, I thought maybe it's also a moment where I can reflect and say I was wrong, or maybe, you know, like I can add something to it. So I'll start by doing a very quick introduction of um, where I was. So the two concepts that I'm going to explore today is this idea of unfinished, unfinishedness, and incompletion, uh, which I actually think is also a very nice uh, uh, follow-up. Ah, thank you. You read my mind. Yeah, it's nice following the work of uh, Fabian and Mitra and also the, the video of Max um, in this trajectory of incompletion 
unbegrenzt, los, whatever. <laughs> Not gonna even try. So, um, these are the two concepts that for me defined, um, if you want like a framework in which I understand images and in which I understand the possibility of the museum to operate. So I'm applying each one of them to the photographic image and also to the museum as a space. So unfinishedness, <laughs> um, there is this quote, quote from, uh, it was gently provided by um, Doris Gasser, research curator at Photo Museum of Winterthur. The business of the computer is always unfinished. In fact, unfinished defines the aesthetic of digital media, which is a quote from Lunenfeld from 1999. So it's a bit dated, but still, I think at that time there was this moment where this shift was clear. Now maybe we take it a bit for granted, and I still think it's a very important um, idea that we went from this idea of static, solid, stable things that the museum represents. And I think this friction with the properties of digitality that keeps on evolving um, and keeps on unfolding over time performatively and so on. So in this friction, I, I think we have witnessed it in this uh, day and a half, right? Like we've, I've seen also the, in, in the past uh, um, talks, I think there is always this um, resistance almost from a certain um, museum mindset from the ideas of let go, we've seen the idea of deletion, of uh, not being able to collect and preserve everything, especially from this side here, you know, there's somebody who's like, but maybe the archive can really do everything, no. And then <clears throat> incompletion is actually something that was inspired by this uh, artwork from uh, um, the Italian collective Alterazioni Video, In Computo Siciliano is a project in which they analyze all the unfinished architecture in Italy and uh, finding specifically more density of this unfinished structure in Sicily, which are due to a lot of different reasons, uh, political mismanagement, uh, corruption, bribery, and so on. Um, but they claim that Sicilian incompletion actually is not only a valid artistic and architectural form, but actually the most creative architectural style since the second post-war in Italy. And I have a whole manifesto which I invite you to go and look at. Um, I just took one of their postulates as an example. Incompletion is postulated on the partial execution of a project followed by continual modification that generate new spurts of activity. So this incompletion that we can see as you know, problematic because of these political issues. Um, is actually, can actually be seen as propelling new creative activity. So incompletion is a temporal process, as a dance repeated over the years with modifications and decisions that provide in-depth narrative of the speculative munificence of Sicilians and all other Italians. Seemingly purposeless sites dominate the landscape like triumphal arches. And actually, if you go to Sicily, they um, made a map uh, like an archaeological site, which is not official, but you can have a, uh, download the map and go visit all of these places. So this is a picture that I took in Jarre, a very small town in Sicily that has a polo stadium, which is fully completed, but never actually saw one single horse come into a polo match. But it is an incredible, fantastic site to go there in the middle of nowhere and seeing this, like, um, yeah triumphal arches of incompletion. Okay, um, so yeah, four years ago I was like, yeah, so this is what I think, this is what I see, but, and I was really tempted to do a manifesto myself, but then I thought, yeah, no, you know, like, and now this time I was like, yes, let's do a manifesto. Let's do an incomplete manifesto. So here I go, it's gonna be, um, <laughs> let's just go. <laughs> All right, so. Number one, incompletion is the key to understanding the transformation of photography in its digital and networked form. I've added a bunch of gifts for every slide which I, because I thought it would hypnotize you at this stage of the day, but I also figured out that it's probably also gonna cause some headache because they're, they're well, anyway. Um, <clears throat> 
So this is an example of Gaugan, uh, which is a platform uh, created by NVIDIA, um, which is used in general adversarial networks to create photorealistic images based on segmentation maps, basically uh, kind of like uh, MS Paint brushes that associate every color to a different structure. So you can see like bridge, fences, house, any kind of creates um, these images, and then you can keep on drawing and you keep on creating new images. And this is a bot uh, that randomly applies different um, bridges, uh, fences, different colors, and then it's uh, performing over time um, for like 12 hours, for uh, 14 hours, and so on, like uh, keep on um, creating images. So this kind of photographic image that is just like this ongoing process. Two, incompletion is an active resistance against the stabilization of the image, escaping the walls of the wide cube and the power of the museum with no single owner and no fixed meaning. So this is the other thing that um, I think it's very important that incompletion is to be understood as an active political quality of the image, which circulates and is appropriated by different hands. Uh, so this is just an example from two artists who used a depth camera to 3D scan um, the Nefertiti at the um, Museum Berlin and basically appropriated this, this uh, colonial, loot, colonial loot and uh, restituted to the, the um, well, to the people, actually, because then also all the people on the internet downloaded it, they could download it, remix it, and so on. But of course, on the other side, we can think of memes and the meme wars, you know, in the post-Brexit, post-Trump. Uh, we know by now that all of these images and their circulation um, that escaped uh, in different social media and different online pockets have very much political implications. So here, of course, for the benefit, for the cause that I want to bring on, I'm, I'm focusing on the quality of resistance um, from this side. Three, incompletion is constant creativity. Its eternal partial execution is followed by continual modifications, which generates new activity. Its process and performance, its variations, endlessly unfolding over time. So... Yeah, I'm not sure here where we are with this like first, second, third level of reproduction. But uh, if we think um, of this idea of memes again and GIFs and how meanings is uh, constantly being created in a similar way to what I mentioned before in this, this idea of incompletion as, as a needed, necessary part of um, creativity that unfolds over time, among time, but also among different communities. And... Um, which keeps modifying this image. So where, where does the image start? Where does the image end? Um, I mean, the first image and the last one, but also in terms of authorship. You know, I've heard a lot of like the original and the copy, and I think that um, a discourse that here is challenged fundamentally, right? And is it even important, is it even interesting to trace like where the first image took place and who was the first one to modify it? And what can we actually learn by looking at this as a collective exercise? So this is actually an excerpt from Oliver Larich Variations. So the whole um, videos that he's been doing since 2012 actually shows all these different um, ways in which also different images are copied, stolen, replicated, modified. So these are very, very small excerpts. Four, incompletion is making visible the invisible showing the infrastructure that sustain materiality of digital media and the filters that shape screen images. So this idea of um, incompletion also in terms of compression, filters, when an image is actually not loaded, it's broken. So all of these this, uh, um, ideas are connected to the politics of infrastructure, which um, are the ones that support the, the um, visual visuality of uh, um, images on our screen. So screen images is a term from uh, Winfried Gerling. Um, so in this example, Rosa Menkman, who has, uh, of course, works, uh, worked extensively with uh, glitches and compression and artifacts, uh, looking at how also the different politics of representation are embedded within these technological image systems. 
Five. Incompletion is embracing fluidity and rejecting dominant norms and standards. It prides on being fake when real means reinforcing bias and inequality. So this may be also a bit of my reaction towards the discourses of deep fakes and what is real. We cannot trust the images anymore because everything is fake. Um, yeah, sure, although, I mean, if you were believing in the image depicting anything real in the first place, maybe that's your problem. Um, I think that there's a very strong quality in the imagination that all of these like AIs can bring in uh, empowering and also fighting against the representation politics that have been reinforced over the years, right? Uh, so this work specifically is an AI drag show cabaret created by Jake Elvis. Um, you can actually go on the website and pick a performer, and ZZ is actually this, this performance that mutates um, gender and face and, and body, so this idea of, of a truly kind of fluid. So using deepfake in this sense, or the same deepfake technology, to actually uh, not imitate reality, but create and shape in reality. Six, incompletion is an act of viewing from a multiplicity of creators, human and non-human, collectively responsible for the emergence of a post-human vision. So, this other idea of incompletion in this case of like collaboration, incompletion in the sense of like a constant negotiation between the algorithms that have now um, been embedded in our systems of visions, from cameras to um, facial recognition systems to other different kind of artificial intelligence or just like even um, yeah, different machine learning um, systems, which are embedded with our logic, which are trying to replicate human vision, but at the same time uh, are merging the human and non-human within them, right? They, they contain something deeply human, at the same time, of course, um, they distort the human vision. So this is a project from this uh, Korean duo, Shin Song Bak, Kim Jong hoon Cloudface from 2012. So it's actually quite old uh, project in terms of all the AI, machine vision, and uh, face detection project we've seen, but I still think it's one of the most beautiful ones to me because it applies face detection to the clouds, and so it really kind of shows this um, human logic of looking at the clouds and trying to see a face um, through an algorithmic lens. And it was, of course, wonderful to see that at the Catherine show in uh, Seoul, Berlin, which is also going to Arl, right? So let's pitch that uh, for those going there. And then, oh, this is embarrassing, sorry, I forgot. Uh, but basically, yeah, something about documentation. No, I thought after yesterday's uh, um, presentation from Annette that uh, there's also something that I should have, but I didn't have time to, to think about it, so. Yeah, so this is a kind of incomplete manifesto about this uh, photographic incomplete. And there's, of course, many more points that could come to mind. Um, and, <clears throat> Now moving to the unfinished museum. Uh, what's my time range and what do I? 15, 30, okay. All right, so <clears throat> this was somehow an attempt to try, I don't wanna say defend, but make a case for uh, digital network images to be understood for their properties and not just through the lens of photography, history, and tradition. Of course, there is a trajectory that connects them, but there's also specificities and breaks. And I think the idea that these properties, the properties of digitality and the network, um, my claim is that they're in contrast with the static and strict boundaries of the physical exhibition space, and also of the archive and the collection, and the tradition of museum as a space for stabilization. Um, given, you know, like uh, think of uh, the artificial scarcity of uh, imposing edition, caption, labels, you know, things have to be kind of fixed once they enter the archive and the uh, collection, or at least in the majority of this tradition. So what alternative spaces can be imagined to extend and expand the museum online, and what relationship can ex exist between the two? Um, <clears throat> yeah, other questions? Okay, so 
<laughs> so um, unfinished is the key to understanding the transformation of the photography museum and its expansion into digital and online spaces. And here I'm showing um, the blog of Photo Museum Still Searching, which is actually a project that was uh, launched already before my arrival in 2012. And it's now in this third incarnation in terms of, of design, but at its root is still a very, very simple, technically simple um, platform, right? Uh, everybody could uh, start uh, a blog, no matter how big your institution is. But it's already a place that allows sort of a discursive place. So uh, at the end of this um, blog post by Andrew Dudney, you can see um, this back and forth in the comments with uh, one of the reader with the author. So I think already in its smallest form, back in 2012, the Photo Museum was quite smart in introducing uh, this small space that could go, could exist outside of the exhibition space that could um, allow the museum to expand onto digital space. Right? So that at, at the base of this idea is also that we have to stop and I think we have stopped, but let's say it's one more for the people in the back, no, not you specifically. The division between digital and physical, right? Like there is no such thing as a physical exhibition space that is in contrast with an online space of the museum. The two are complementary and there's a possibility to expand the institution on online uh, spaces. So that should be a complementary. Two, unfinished is discursive, allowing the curatorial reflection to unfold and evolve in research of the institution to have a space. So not only to have um, the audience interact with um, the writers and writers to kind of um, have a space to write about their thought process and their research, but also museums have curators and curators do a lot of uh, research and I always am um, very disappointed when I don't see that I only see I love exhibitions but I sometimes very often I would like to know what the process behind and all of that and I think um, while I agree that maybe exhibition space has its own specificity of course online spaces are great for showing this side that is very hidden <clears throat> so both uh, the previous example and this one are from our um, now finished situations uh, experiment which was a um, and online and offline, um, online and physical exhibition space and lab for research. Three, unfinished is relationality among positions that keep creating new connections among themselves and generating new meaning through these networks. So this is quite simple in terms of technology. Once again, it's about the possibility of different um, assets to be tagged and come into connection within each other. But it also opens up a different temporality of the museum. The museum has usually exhibitions, and they end, they have a publication, and that's all you have. Um, and then you have another exhibition. Whereas like, if you have different assets that evolve over time, then suddenly a new artwork can have a relation to an artwork that was select curated two years before. So suddenly this is a completely different concept and the different temporality in which we can make these relations. And as curators, we can recurate, remap all of these different positions and create a new meaning once again. Four, unfinished is challenging viewers to a different experience, complementary to the physical exhibition, hosting artworks that cannot be squeezed in the wide cube. So one of the um, big issues, of course, is that the wide cube, the traditional exhibition space, really forces artists to, in the best case, like um, create their work towards that specific setup. In the worst case, be excluded from the exhibition space. So in any case, I think that there's a lot to be said about exhibition spaces influencing how also artistic practices are born and how they are evolving. So the idea to try and extend, once again, the exhibition space to different online platform is something that is um, allowing artists to, to work differently. Here we have um, a work by 
Oh, I didn't write it. The French duo It's Our Playground, which we are invited to spend some time in Photo Museum in uh, our collection and work both with the collection online and the collection in situ and then remix it and created this um, website. Five, unfinished is transparency and opening the doors to the inner working of the museum. So this is a research project by Doris Gassert and Mona Schubert, our um, uh, assistant curator before Katrin Bauer here, and uh, um, looked at the collection and a particular acquisition from uh, a work by Leonore Mao, investigating its uh, um, source of, with interviews and uh, actually opening up again this idea of uh, the archive, the collection, and kind of making the, the research within the institution visible. Then six, Unfinished is exhausting self-reflexivity. Because it's true, sometimes it's like, you know, I understand, I understand those people who are like, no, I'm not doing an online platform. I'm not dealing with like uh, digital images. I'm just gonna make an exhibition, it's gonna look amazing. We're all gonna enjoy it, we'll have a vernissage. And I totally get it, <laughs> I'm not here to judge. Um, and also, of course, like, you know, we're, tackling so many issues, of course, of, of uh, um, the colonial histories that are part of our institutions, the racism that is embedded in the photographic capture, sexism that is uh, almost like, seems like to be part of uh, photography itself. And it just like sometimes feels like, okay, this self-reflexivity is not, is not helping me, um, <laughs> you know, in, a, in, a, in looking at the world and being happy and positive about it. Okay, so <clears throat> this is my take, this is my manifesto, um, and <laughs> okay, I wanted to talk a little bit about three projects, it's probably too much, so you know, I'm just going <laughs> to uh, cut it short if I don't have time, but I want to um, talk a little bit about how these ideas are embedded also in the program, in the projects that we've been doing, that we're doing and that we will do. Um, the first one is uh, Screenwalks, which Lulu mentioned already in the introduction. The second is the case of um, Insta Repeat and how we collected it and we're collecting it and, and how preserving it with this question mark. And the third is a project we're launching in July called Permanent Beta, The Lure of the Image. So, <clears throat> you might think. So, thank you. Screenworks is a collaborative project that we started together with the Photographers Gallery in London um, during lockdown. So in April 2020, we launched this series of live streams in an effort, of course, to respond to the pandemic, but also we caught the chance to develop shared interests that we had in our digital program and their digital program, um, which is exactly to look at uh, the specificity of these uh, digital network images. So we decided to launch a series of live streams um, with Zoom events, like many did, but I think that the series had um, a more interesting twist in the sense that all the artists that we are invited um, are invited to perform the network in a way or the other. So we invited artists who are actually working with different online and network spaces. They are working, appropriating images from um, online marketplaces, somebody uh, is working with uh, profiles from Tinder, um, we've had people who worked in video games, uh, people creating um, YouTube live performances. And so kind of the, the live stream became this sort of format and medium which, within which they could operate in a way that they could never do in a physical exhibition space. So these are just... Um, a selection of them, um, some of my favorites. So we have um, 
maybe okay, just very quickly. The uh, Laura Paloma performing uh, groups on Facebook where people pretend to be animal or things, like uh, which grew up in popularity during the pandemic. There was like a, a group with a million users pretending to be an ant in an ant colony. <laughs> so the um, second one is uh, um, Swiss photographer Corinne Vionnet who might be known already, work with this uh, overlaying of uh, tourist images and which did like a live uh, overlay of images uh, from viewers who sent her the pictures and which later was turned into a postcard and sent to all the people who contributed. Um, Laurent Houret, um, also Swiss artist who made a work about moderation and she actually allowed people to remote enter her computer uh, and do whatever they wanted with um, the folder of the project. So you see here they open like the, the photo booth and access their computer in different ways. Um, here we have Alan Butler <laughs> dressed as Carlton Watkins um, doing a seven hours performance in a video games that simulates the Sierra taking screenshots based on the pictures of Watkins from the Sierra. Um, then we had um, a, one on uh, um, face filters, so Snapchat and Instagram face filters. This is a bot. We also had like a, a couple of automated Screenworks event in which an, a bot performs um, different online image spaces. This one is a Google Street View photography bot, which was unleashed in uh, different places where like uh, I don't know, Ansel Adams took pictures and then he was just like going around and taking automated pictures. So, <clears throat> so this is, this is one of the, the, the moments, so, you know, like, here is playing the game, taking out the virtual camera, trying to, to take a picture that is as close as possible to the original um, of Carlton Watkins. And then moving on, I mean, go check it out. It's on YouTube. Uh, all of the videos happen in Zoom for people who can uh, join and join the artists. But um, they're also recorded then on YouTube. We now have an archive of more than 40 events um, for people who want to, to check it. So yeah, make sure to check out all of the seven and a half hours, please. They have broken the... Okay, so this is the... the, the yeah, I'm just going to cut at, at 30. I'm just going to stop, okay? So, and then... <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm just going to use the 30 minutes, and when it's over, like, it's over. Uh -huh, okay. uh, this organization, eh? It's... Okay, so... <laughs> Um, all right, so I'm taking this four or five, actually, let me take this last four minutes to pitch something. So just two days ago, we launched a subscription model for Screenwalks. So it's called Folders, and it asks everybody who wants, you know, to contribute to donate seven euros a month to subscribe to Screenwalks. We want to keep all of the events for free, all the video documentation, will be for free, and what you get in return is that you get a web page, which maybe I can show right now, um, with your folders with your name on it. Oh. So here, for example, some of the subscribers uh, all have their folders, and uh, so what we do is that we curate your folder. So you can specify what are your interests in uh, photography um, related to the program, and then John and I, John from the Photography Gallery and I will manually um, curate your folders with different files. Um, files that are donated by the artists of Screenworks and files that are made to be copied, shared, circulated 
Um, I'm just going to give maybe an example we just uploaded. So this is a user called Unicorn Princess, so you can choose whatever username you want. Um, so it's, it's very web 1.0, as you can see. So Rock Herms was our third screen walk participant, um, donated a series of, of screenshots, basically from his life. Uh, so you can see here the, I don't know if it's too small, the following is a collection of different screenshots that cover the major events that happened in my personal and professional life since 2014. Publishing my book, surviving a car accident, publishing my book Postcards from Home, leaving for around the world overland trip on a motorcycle, mom dies of cancer, it's a match with Alba, dad dies of cancer, printing my first Pantayaso screenshot on a Hane Mule Grise paper. So it's... Um, you never know what you get, actually, and like lots of people, you know, they, they just uh, choose to donate uh, screenshots, gifts, small videos, links, and when you receive a file, then you are notified by email. Um, I just wanted to find, uh, yeah, this is very heartbreaking, wait, but I wanted to find the... Which one? Which number was the? Yeah, so uh, this is, it's a match with Alba. This is the Tinder profile of Rock Herms. So I just think that also, you know, if you want to know the Tinder profile of your favorite artist, subscribe to Folder <laughs> and you'll find it. So actually this is, I think, the, the best. Uh, screenshot profiles ever. And even the folders are actually accessible and open to everyone. So it's, everything is open and accessible. It's more um, also a way to support the program and make the, the program uh, in part self-sustainable uh, or in part sustainable. Because again, the, the, the other issue with uh, um, online platforms, of course, is that there's still um, difficulties in funding models, especially when more traditional funding bodies are still very much looking at exhibition and other, other platforms. Okay, so I'm just going to run down all the slides. Um, wait. Okay, so now I'm just going to press down and we, we see all the slides because I, I did them and I feel like I should at least. So. Ah, that was very fast. <laughs> I'm back. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so let's do it again. Right, let me do it again. So, yeah, now we're going to just go through the slides. I'm just going to press down because, you know, I did them. I'd like to show them. Wow, it's going to be it's just so cool. Next time. In four years. In four years, I can... I can continue if you will have me again. So thank you very much.